Good morning, everyone, and welcome to week three of the series that we're busy focusing on this term, the armor of God. Now, this week, I'm going to do a little recap just for those that have maybe just joined and just to remind um, everyone about what we've been doing so far. But we're going to, in order to fit in with Valentine's Day, which is coming up soon, I've switched the week three and four around. So today we're actually going to focus on the shoes in the armor of God and not the breastplate. And then we're going to leave the breastplate for next week. So I'm going to start off just by, again, we're turning to Ephesians chapter 6, and um, I'm going to skip through from, from verse 10 and just read a bit around there, just to recap on what we're actually learning about. And it says there in this passage entitled The Armor of God, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Now, what I keep on telling the kids on Sundays is, why are we learning about the armor of God? What is so important about it? It's the thing that God equips us to stand firm against the temptation of sin. And if you look at my picture that we're going to add to every week, it says at the top with Jesus, I can win against sin. Okay, so the devil wants us to sin because that pushes us away from God. But God wants us to ask for forgiveness so that we can be close to him. And he gives us this armor of God that we're learning about. Now, is it something that you go to your cupboard and you put on like a, like a suit, a dress-up outfit? No, of course not. What we're talking about is stuff that we've got to constantly pray about. Here's a picture of a boy and a girl. And there is that word that I want you to carry on thinking about. That's how we put on the armor of God, through prayer. We pray and ask God to help us put on the belt of truth, which is what we spoke about last week. And the importance of the belt of truth, it says here, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. And I, I use the example of a, of a tool belt with a whole lot of compartments. And if we imagine, if we close our eyes and imagine that we have a big, heavy belt of truth around us to protect us, those are the things that we know the truths about God. Things like Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins so one day we can be with him in heaven. That's a truth. Another truth is God is Almighty. He is never changing. He sent his son Jesus as a little baby to, to grow up and walk with us as a human and then to land upon the cross. Those are all biblical truths. And how do we know about these truths? Through learning more about them, reading our Bible, coming to Sunday school, um, reading devotions at home, spending time with God. That's how we learn and that's how we develop our belt of truth. Okay, so that's a recap. Today we're going to move on to the shoes in this armor of God. And I am going to be coloring these shoes in to symbolize what we are doing today. Okay. So remember, after the, the belt of truth, we actually move on to the breastplate of righteousness. That was not very neat. Okay, hopefully you can't see the, the squiggles out there so my children don't criticize me for the way I color in. Um, okay, it says after, stand firm then with your belt of truth buckled around your waist. And then it says with the breastplate of righteousness in place. That's for next week. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Right, we're going to discuss today what is, what is the gospel of peace and why do we need shoes to be fitted and ready with the gospel of peace. Okay, I'm sure everyone puts shoes on every single day. And why do you put shoes on? You know, Shoes are not my favorite things. And actually for my children, I normally, if whenever I can, I say, don't wear your shoes. But I've got a son in grade R and every day he's so happy to go to school without shoes. It's the last year that he can do that. And he loves to go barefoot. But I keep on always reminding him, especially in this 30 degree summer heat, where he comes out of school, there's tar 
And what happens in the middle of the day? The tar gets so burning hot. So I always say, Jess, put your shoes on in your, no, sorry, put your shoes in your bag so that after school you can put your shoes on. Why? What do shoes do? They protect our feet. So they protect our feet from thorns, they protect our feet from sharp stones and glass and very hot tar. Okay, so we are told in the Bible to prepare our feet with the preparation that comes from the gospel of peace. This is the gospel of peace. The fact that Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins and then rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. This means that if we believe in Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive us of our sins, one day we can live with him peacefully in heaven forever. We don't have to worry because we know we are going to heaven once we understand that truth. And why do you think we have to prepare our feet for this? Well, one of the biggest aspects about being a Christian and understanding that and, and accepting it in our hearts, Jesus then told us before he went up to heaven is what he said, go and spread the gospel. That means go and tell more people about Jesus, who I am, and, and so that they too can be a Christian and then um, give their lives to Jesus and one day live with him. So the core of what our belief is, if we are a Christian, once we are a Christian and accept Jesus into our hearts, what are we told to do? Spread the gospel of peace. And as we're walking around spreading the gospel of peace, it would be an idea to most of the time wear shoes. That's where the, this part of the armor of God fits in. Our job as warriors for God, because remember when we have the armor on, we are warriors. We are fighting something. And what are we fighting? The devil's schemes. That's what the Bible says. Our job as warriors for God is to let as many people as we know know about the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus. And one way we can do this is to tell them about the A, B, C's. And I'm just going to quickly run through that. A stands for accept that you're a sinner and that you are in need of a savior. So accept that you can't do this by yourself and you need a savior and that's Jesus. B is believe that Jesus Christ has already died for our sins and wants us to follow him for the rest of our life and then one day go to heaven. A, accept, believe, and C is confess your sins to Jesus and ask him to come into your heart and he will forgive your sins. Okay, so accept that you're a sinner in need of a savior. B is believe that Jesus sent his son for us to, so that one day we can be with him in heaven. Okay, and C is to confess our sins and um, believe that Jesus then has forgiven us and we are made new in him. And so when you are speaking to your friends and maybe you're chatting about Christianity and what it means, those ABCs are very important for you to remember for the rest of your life as to how to chat and how to address this sort of situation with, with um, sharing the gospel with, with other children. Then just a little last bit, just to add to this. Imagine you were playing, um, let's think of, it, imagine you were playing basketball. It's not a very common South African sport, but I'm sure you all know what it is. Um, and imagine you were standing on the court and you said to your friends, I can do the best slam dunk. And that means like you jump up and slam the ball in the hoop. Um, and everyone was listening but what would they expect? They would then expect you to show them that you can do that. Because saying it and not doing it, those things don't match. If you say something, people are going to, have to, people are going to expect you to do that thing. Okay? And as Christians, that's what we really need to remember. If we say we are Christian, we need to act like Christians. That means we need to act with love in our hearts and kindness for others and caring and understanding and kind of be like Jesus was. That's our biggest aim. That's my biggest aim. It's a prayer I have so often. Jesus, please help me to be more like you. Help me to respond when I'm really angry in a situation more like you would. Not 
from our worldly anger and frustration, but help me to think about how you would respond in that situation. And so that's something really important. As we put our shoes on um, and fit them on with the readiness of the gospel of peace to spread the word, we need to remember to act the, the same way that we speak. Okay, and so if people know we're Christians, we've got to behave like that too. Otherwise, we're going to be criticized. So I'm going to just end with the, with the memory verse as we're going through. It's from Ephesians 6 verse 11. And it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And on that note, let's end in prayer. Father God, thank you that you equip us with um, the armor that no man can create, but only you can, can give to us. And Father, as we go through these next few weeks and we just learn more about what each of these parts of the armor mean, I pray that they would really help to just apply in our own lives and that we would wake up and start to actually um, pray that over our life as we start the day that we put on the belt of truth that you've equipped us with and the shoes uh, of the, with readiness of the gospel of peace and the breastplate and the helmet just to protect us against the things that we know we are going to face. Father, I pray for, for each of the children that are just dealing with such a lot of busyness at school. And although it's such a wonderful thing, and it's so, it's so exciting, and, and we can feel privileged to be in a country that is allowing this stuff. Um, but yeah, we just pray for, for, your, um, for your guidance and for your help over each of their lives um, as they deal with the things that every child is, is facing at the moment. Um, Thank you for this time, Lord Jesus, and thank you that we are part of a church that can even get these messages out like this. We just pray this in and through your name. Amen.